one. At the top of the world sat an island. At the heart of that island lived a boy named Orgy. Orgy was just like most other boys, except in one way. He had a job. Orgy worked in the fabled stables, a magical place full of one-of-a-kind creatures. Usually, Orgy loved his job, but not today. Today, he had a problem. Orgy was taking care of the unfeeling brute. This was a tricky task because Orgy had no idea what the unfeeling brute wanted from life. The creature had no eyes, no ears, no mouth, and no nose. Orgy was pretty sure it had a head, but he couldn't be certain. Will of the Wisp drifted over. Any luck? Ah, oh, only bad luck. Orgy flopped to the ground. Oh, I've tried singing to her, feeding her, and taking her for a walk, oh, but she won't respond. Maybe she wants to tickle fight. Willow was always up for a good tickle fight. Orgy picked up Fen and waved him in front of the brute. Maybe she wants to play fetch. Fen wriggled out of his grip. Maybe the thing just wants to be left alone. Some of us like being left alone. This was a rude thing to say, but what do you expect from a literal stick in the mud? Two. At that very moment, in a village far away. A bell was ding, ding, dinging as loud as loud could be. It was an alarm bell. It belonged to a bank, a bank with an open front door. Two thieves strolled through the halls. They wore dark cloaks with heavy hoods. They had loot sacks and lock picks. They had plans and schemes. There was a vault in the basement of the bank, a vault with one-of-a-kind treasure. The thieves walked into the vault and swiftly swept the treasure into their bags. And why didn't the guards stop them? That is a very good question. Three. Orgy was on the roof, cleaning out the busy beehives. He was still thinking about the unfeeling brute. Hmm. How do you help someone who doesn't want anything? Willow was trying to catch a busy bee in her paws. Maybe Fan is right. Maybe we should just leave her alone. Of course, I'm right. Orgy wiped the beeswax off his hands. I'm not ready to give up just yet. When Orgy came to the island, he made a promise to care for all the beasts in the fabled stables, even the hard-to-love beasts. He didn't stop caring for the busy bees, just because they might sting him. Whatever the brute needs, it's my job to help. I know. We can ask Professor Cake what to do. Professor Cake was a man who owned the island. He was very old and very clever. He was also very busy. I know I shouldn't bother the professor, but maybe just this once. <laughs> Suddenly, the stable shook and shuddered and twitched and sputtered. A moment later, everything was still again. Orgy picked himself up. He and Willa looked at each other. A, A new arrival. arrival. Four. Sometimes the fabled stables changed to make room for a new beast. The whole place would rearrange itself, and then Orgy would find an empty stall that led to a beast somewhere in the wide world. 
It was Augie's job to go out and rescue that beast from danger. Race you there! I win! Oh. I'll get you next time. He slid down a rope and landed beside her. A new stall had appeared right next to the unfeeling brute. Augie looked at the words on the sign. Tattle tail? That doesn't sound like a very friendly thing. Augie rolled up his sleeves. Friendly or not, it's our job to help. What did you say? I think I've got beeswax in my ears. You have ears? Augie paced in front of the gate, thinking. First we'll need supplies. We can't march in unprepared. You can't march in underwear? Fen repeated, sort of. Augie looked at the world beyond. Who knew what dangers could be waiting for them? We'll need a lantern and some rope and a bag and a map and my field book and... Last one there's a rotten egg. Wait! But she was already gone. Augie grabbed hold of Fen. It looks like a stick in the mud is all the supplies I'm going to get. He hoped it would be enough. Away I go. And away he went. Five. Augie found himself in the middle of a village. A sign over the gate read, Welcome to Rainbow's End. The streets were empty. The stoops were empty. The shops were empty. Ooh, the whole place looks abandoned. A band-aid? Are you hurt? Willa's tail twitched tall. There's someone hiding close by. I can feel it. Willa could always tell when people were playing hide-and-go-seek. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Over here. In the alley. Augie saw a lady peeking out from the corner. She looked nervous. She looked tired. Oh, hello. I, um, didn't see you there. That's a lie. She was spying on you. The woman shuffled out from her hiding spot. It's true. I was afraid you were more robbers. I'm Mayor Clover. I wouldn't shake that hand if I were you. Right before you got here, she was picking her nose. I was not. Check her finger if you don't believe me. Augie peered at the talking creature. It was fluffy. It was long. It was shaped exactly like a tail. My name is Augie, and I'm looking for a one-of-a-kind creature called a tattletail. Well, you found it. Only it's not one of a kind anymore. You can all come out now. Dozens of other people shuffled out from their hiding places. Every one of them had a tail. Six. Willa clapped her paws. This isn't a rescue. This is a party. Augie wasn't so sure. Every person in town looked miserable. Um, how did this happen? And so Mayor Clover shared her tale of woe. It all started when I found a box in the courtyard. The box wasn't addressed to me, but I was curious. I pried open the lid. To my surprise, 
the box was empty. But when I turned around, I discovered that this strange creature had attached itself to me. At first I thought I might enjoy having a tail, but then I learned something else about the tail. I could talk. She opened the box. It wasn't addressed to her, but she opened it anyway. Every time I did something even a little bit wrong, the tail made sure everyone knew about it. She tracked mud on the floor. She took the last cookie from the cookie jar. She cut in line. I wasn't the only one in trouble. My tail seemed to be able to multiply. Soon every person in the village had a tail of their own. She said a bad word. He didn't wash his hands. The tails created so much confusion that when the robbers showed up, no one was there to stop them. And we've been stuck with these things ever since. She won't share. He stole my spot. Seven. Mayor Clover led them to a tower at the end of the square. This is where it all started. Augie heard a ding, ding, dinging sound coming from inside the tower. Is that an alarm bell? What's an alarm smell? Rainbow's End is home to a legendary pot of gold. If you take a coin out of it, two more appear inside. We keep it safe inside our bank. Two guards protect it day and night. Not anymore. Two guards in uniform shook their heads. They had tails too. It's our fault. We were so busy arguing with each other that the robbers walked right past us. And now we've lost our precious pot. Precious snot? Gross! Augie knew he wouldn't get much done if Fen kept interrupting. I'm worried about that wax in your ears. Why don't you go clean up? Fen gave him a confused look. If you say so. He shrugged and wandered off. Augie turned back to the mayor. I can't help you catch the robbers, but I can help these tattletales. Yep. It's our job to save one-of-a-kind creatures from danger. But they're not in danger. We're the ones in trouble. Augie didn't want to argue. In either case, the first step is to get them off you. He looked at the shops around him. What could he use to lure away the tattletales? And then he got an idea. A tempting, tasty idea. Eight. Augie burst from the bakery with a tray full of bagels and brownies and cookies and cakes. Come big, come small, come snacks for all. The tails looked at the food. They opened their mouths and they tattled. I eat that cheesecake. It makes the mayor gassy. Keep Horace away. He already ate two breakfasts. Ophelia just double dipped. Before Augie knew it, arguments had broken out all across the village. Apparently tattletales don't care about food. Augie and Willa tried everything they could think of to safely remove the tattletales. They tried scaring them off. Boo! Ah! Tickling them off. 
tearing them off and tricking them off. But nothing worked. Oh, it's hopeless. Ow! He's trying to smush me! Augie jumped back up. His eyes went as wide as cherry pies. A new tattletale had appeared, and it was attached to him. Nine. While Augie was getting used to his new tail, Fen was wandering the streets of Rainbow's End, more than a little confused. Augie told him to go clean up, but that was not what Fen had heard. Gold clean up. What does that even mean? That's when he noticed something on the street. It was small. It was round. It was gold. Now I get it. Fen picked up the piece of gold and threw it in a trash can. He found another piece of gold nearby, and then another, and another. I'm doing an excellent job. People could trip over these. Fen followed the trail of gold coins all through the village. I wonder who dropped all this gold. He soon found his answer when... <gasps> Ten. Fen stared at the robbers, who were huddled in an empty schoolhouse. They had dark cloaks with strange marks on the front. These weren't just robbers, these were rooks. The Rooks were a secret group of villains. They were always trying to steal one-of-a-kind things for their own wicked ends. They had once tried to capture Willa, and now they had stolen the pot of gold. Help! It's the Rooks! The first Rook raised a fistful of sparkling dust. Zip it, or I'll curse you with pixie powder. The second rook raised a pair of scissors. And I'll snip you to bits with these magic shears. Fen was about to be frightened, but then he noticed something. Hey, you've both got tails. For the record, that's not really pixie powder. It's glitter. And those are just craft scissors. I can barely cut paper. Ben scowled at the rooks. Why are you both hiding in here? Shouldn't you be long gone? The first rook rubbed her temples. The tattletales were supposed to be a distraction so that we could rob the bank. But before we could escape, we caught tales of our own. We had to hide in here so no one would hear them blabbing. We've been here all night. Every time we try to sneak outside, they start calling for help. I just want to go home. You just want a goat poem? Fen was having trouble following all this. Whatever. I'm getting out of here. The rook stepped in front of him. If you leave, you, you might tell people where we're hiding. hiding. You're, You're not getting, getting out of here without, without a fight. fight. Fen couldn't hear what they said, but he had a pretty good idea what they meant. Have it your way. Fen you will remember, was a stick in the mud. He could shift shape into any manner of useful tools. 
He stretched out his branches and started to change into something large. Something heavy. Something hammery. Eleven. Back in the village square, Augie was losing hope. He had tried everything he could think of to help the Tattletales, but nothing had worked. What's Professor Cake gonna say if I fail? Everybody look! Augie's about to cry. I am not! Willa tried chasing her new tail, but tripped and crashed. <sighs> Two tails make me all wobbly. Augie stood up. There must be some way out of this. He looked around the square. What could he use to get the tattletales back into their crate? Augie heard a clink, clink, clink at the end of the street. He turned and saw Fen carrying an enormous pot of gold. You found it! Rainbow's End is saved! Fen had no idea what she was saying. I cleaned up all the gold, lady! What about the robbers? Augie made sure to speak clearly so Fen could understand him. I cleaned them up too, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Fen explained how the rooks had tried to hold him prisoner, but he had managed to knock them out cold. As soon as the rooks went beddy by, their tails just wandered off. Sure enough, Two tattletales were slithering down the street. Augie watched as they slinked right past him and curled up inside the open crate. It looks like they have no use for sleeping people. That's it. We can use that talking stick to knock everyone unconscious. Wait! Augie looked from Fen to the crate. Everyone in town got a tattletale, except Fen. Willa gave Fen a cuddle. They must have sensed his inner goodness. More like his inner boringness. Yeah, he can't hear a word we say. Is that true? They left you alone because you couldn't hear them. Beats me. Fen mined a gob of wax from his ear and flicked it on the ground. Augie looked at Fen's wax-covered branches, and that's when he got an idea. A buzzy, brilliant idea. Twelve. Augie made everyone line up in front of Fen. He scooped out chunks of wax from Fen's branches and handed them out. Ignore your tails and just mind your beeswax. Put it firmly in your ears. His own tail muttered something about how that was disgusting, but Augie couldn't hear. He was too busy minding his beeswax. No pushing, no cutting in line. There's plenty for everyone. There really was plenty. It was amazing how much beeswax Fen had in his ears. One by one, the villagers put the wax in their ears. And one by one, the tattletales got bored. You're no fun. You know it's rude to ignore people. I thought we were friends. Fine. Then I'm not listening to you either. Augie's own tail flopped to the ground. It's working! He watched as his tail slinked across the square and back into the waiting crate. Bye-bye! As the last tail disappeared into the crate, Mayor Clover shouted, Good 
good riddance. The whole town let out a cheer. Augie approached the open crate. When he got there, he saw that all the other tails had vanished. Now there was only the first one. Huh, that wasn't so hard. Tell that to them. Augie turned around to see a very angry crowd moving toward him. Quick, before it escapes, lock that crate and throw it in the lake. Augie blocked their way. No locks! That's not how we treat wild beasts. It's my job to care for all creatures, no matter how hard to love. Augie had never talked to a grown-up like that. He hoped it wasn't too rude. Mayor Clover looked at him for a long moment. You've got one minute to get that thing out of my town. Otherwise, you're all going into the lake. Augie needed to get the tattletale to safety and fast. But he knew some beasts couldn't be rushed. He turned back to the tail. What's your name? Nanya. Augie spoke in his gentlest voice. The voice he used on his crankiest critters. Hello, Nanya. My name is Augie, and these are my friends, Willa and Fen. Best friends. Not your friend. We've been through this. We've come to bring you to the fabled stables, a safe place without crates or robbers or anyone who can bother you. Also, lots and lots of beeswax, so don't get any ideas. You have to promise not to multiply again. We only have room for you. No tattling. You can't just stick me in some stable and expect me to be happy. If I don't have someone to tattle on, I'm nothing. Augie thought about this. He knew the creature was right. But who in the stables would agree to having a tattletale? And that's when he got an idea. An inscrutable, insensible idea. Thirteen. Careful now. You don't want to startle her. As if we'd know. Augie gently placed the tattletale on what he hoped was the backside of the unfeeling brute. He stepped back. Well, how does it feel? Nanya the tattletale blinked his eyes. Hmm. Suddenly his fur puffed up. <gasps> I. I can feel what she's thinking. Augie smiled. He had hoped this would solve more than one problem. Can you tell if the brute wants anything? Hmm. Let me check. Nanya cocked his head to one side like he was listening. She wants a window so she can feel the breeze. A window? Augie clapped his hands. <gasps> one window coming up. Hang on. She's just getting started. She also wants a blanket at night, and a warm oatmeal bath, and a pet rock, and two pairs of shoes, and a theme song, and a balloon, and one of those little hamster wheel things, but bigger, and a cool nickname, and something she calls elephant pants, and dancing lessons, and... The tattletale told every little wish and secret that the unfeeling brute carried inside. It was a long list. And at some point, Augie lost track. <laughs> Looks like these two are a perfect match. Perfectly irritating. Augie nudged the stick in the mud. You saved an entire village and stopped the rooks. For someone who claims not to care about helping anyone, you sure are good at helping everyone. Fen squinted and wiped his cheek. Excuse me, 
I must have beeswax in my eye. Fourteen. At the top of the world sat an island. At the heart of that island lived a boy named Orgy. He cared for beasts of all kinds. Some were strange. Some were dangerous. Some were hard to love. But every one of them belonged.